Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and uh, well, you, you know the drill. Anyway, today I thought I'd talk about uh, my AI imaging workflow. I, I, I keep hearing about how AI imaging is not real art, how you just type in some text and the AI just remixes something it scraped from the internet to match the prompt. All right, this comment seems to come from people who haven't really tried to create something using AI. Uh, the actual process is a bit more involved and there's a lot of back and forth with the human author and the AI tool to get something serviceable and then you often have to retouch or otherwise enhance the result to get something good. So let's take a look at a typical example. One of my favorite approaches to AI art is to use Midjourney to do a blend between two of my original photos. So for this example, I use this, uh, this one of my photo mandalas, uh, a rather abstract image uh, created from dropping ink into a fish tank. Uh, and this image here of an acrobat from one of our drag the shutter workshops. I use the blend command as the only prompt and got this. <laughs> now, this just didn't happen all at once. There was a lot of adjusting, reframing, cropping, and, and Photoshop enhancing to get to this point. So let's take a look. Okay, so here I'm... Uh, I'm on the Midjourney website, and um, I'm showing you these images here, which were uh, the result of my blend operation. So you can kind of see here, you know, here's my two blend images, and uh, these are the parameters I set up. Uh, it goes like this. So basically, if you want to blend, uh, you have to upload an image or an add image. They say here, add images to your prompt. So if we click on that, all of the images that I've already uploaded um, to Midjourney are, they show up here. So if I pick this one and I just click on the ones I want to use, or I drag and drop something into this little image well here to add it to the collection here. So then what I do is I just do a forward slash blend uh, and that's it. And then we'll just we hit OK, or we set up the parameters. If I if I go over here, I can set up the parameters, uh, you know, for this image size and stylization. Um, there are all kinds of tutorials on how to use Midjourney here. I'm not going to go into that here, but I think actually I had you know stylization and weirdness turned down uh, on this particular one. But um, anyway, you can experiment with all the, these things, and you sort of hit Enter, and you will get. Um, four variations of this, this prompt, which in this case is just blending between these two images. And as you can see, it takes certain elements. It knows that there's a picture and there's a predominant red color here. And this kind of smoky background, it kind of blends them in sort of unexpected ways. In this case, I, I had these four examples. And I, I kind of like this one. So uh, if we click on it, we can see it big here. And these are my, my creative actions here. So using this one, the thing that I, I didn't like was that it sort of cropped into the hand. And this is very common with Midjourney. It, it, it doesn't pay attention to things like this. I mean, we got a reasonable hand here, but it's cropped off. And I don't like things going out of the edge of the frame. So, uh, so what am I going to do? So, so they have this... Uh, reframe um, button down here. So if I click on that, I now get uh, something where I can I can change the framing. So I can either add framing this way or this way. Um, I can also zoom. I can I can you, you do it this way or this way, right? So um, I think what I did is I I did something like this. I wanted to turn it into a vertical. So I, I did something like this and clicked on Submit. And then once you do that, uh, you'll get four more variations. So let me go up. I'm scrolling past all the stuff that I was doing uh, in, in a session here. And I ended up, OK, so here are my, my variations. Let me just look at these. So um, we had this this, 
this, and this. And I, and I, I kind of liked this with the red coin going up into the upper part of the frame here, but I didn't like her hand. And I like this hand much better. I like the more relaxed fig fingers. So um, the solution for me was to take both of these images and download them. If we just click over here, we can download them. And so I downloaded that one and I downloaded this one. Brought them into Photoshop. So we're going to do that now. So I come in here into Photoshop. And um, here's the one image with the bad hand. And here's the other image, and I'm I'm just gonna layer these up together and use the parts that I that I want that, that I like. So I kind of like the smokiness here. I like this red thing. I don't like the hand. Um, let me just look at this again. So I I think that there. Are, well, let me, let's just dive into it here. So I, I've got the move tool. I'm gonna click on the one that I want to put on top. I want to put this one on top because I'm going to mask mask it off mostly except for the hand here. So I hold down the shift key and drag with a move tool up to the other tab. And I'm still holding down the shift key. I drag down and let go of the mouse hand. And now I've got that image right on top. And because Mid Journey is basically re-rendering the same image, they line up pretty nicely. So just looking at this and I'm thinking there's a there's there's only really the hand that I want to I want to replace here. I, I like, you know, aspects of this, but mostly it's just about the hand. So I'm going to mask this off. I'm going to hold down the alt or the option key and click on the, the layer mask icon here which will give me a black layer mask. So now I've masked off that image entirely. Uh, I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to paint with white. And uh, let's make that brush bigger here and softer. Okay. So really all I want to do is, is mask in the hand here. Uh, there's maybe some different smoke down here. No, I didn't like that. I'm going to Maybe I, I, there's something in the middle here that I can use. Uh, so again, I, if I just hit the X key, I can toggle between the foreground and the background color, which in this case is black and white. So that makes it easy to toggle back and forth when I want to add something. So this has this weird smoke in here. I might want to add that. Maybe not. Just adding some extra interest in here. Uh, and is there anything up in here? Maybe a little bit. Um, maybe eh, something up there. Just trying to add some more interest in this. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm kind of thinking, ah, you know, I, I think this would look better as a square instead of a, a vertical. And I'd really like to work this, this red, um, I guess it's you know kind of a scarf-like thing that's extending this this red color of the dress up in here. I'm going to work with that somewhat. Um, but the other thing that that is kind of annoying me, and this I find this happens a lot with with Mid Journey, especially it loves to make things really dramatic and super dark. And I'd like to open this up a little, open up the shadow values a little bit because I know when I print this, it's going to get all this dark area is just going to plug up. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, an exposure adjustment layer here. So I just click on that. And the thing about this is that this gamma correction, this is where you want to play with the brightness uh, or sort of the overall contrast. And, and you can you can do things like open up the shadows just by using the lower gamma number here. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. You can even play around with the exposure, bring down the highlights this way. So it's almost like using the sliders in Lightroom um, for uh, shadow values and highlight values. But anyway, so I, I now I kind of like this. And 
I could play around with this uh, quite a bit more. I, I, my, my tendency would be to save this, these layers as a separate document because ultimately I know I'm just going to blend everything all together. So at the moment, I think, um, I think what I'll do is uh, I will flatten this. So we'll flatten the image. And now I know that I want to, I want to bring this down into a, into a square. So there's a couple of ways to do this. I can uh, I can jump this into a new layer. So I'll do Command or Control J, and I can play around with. Uh, we'll just we'll just select all of it and do a free transform here. Um, Why not transform selection? We'll do a free transform here. And I'll bring this down. Oh, see now, in order to get that to, to work that way, I have to hold down the shift key so it, it doesn't constrain the aspect ratio. And uh, now, well, that's not going to work, right? Because I'm squishing her. So really what I need to do is separate the this top part from the bottom part and I have to pull it in and get it into a square. All right, so there's a this is a um, not going to be that easy. Uh, but first I want to establish what a square is. So I'm going to make an empty layer here. I'm going to get my rectangular marquee tool and hold down the shift key. And when I drag out now, I will get a perfect square uh, selection. And just so I have a guide for what is a perfect square, I'm going to stroke this. And we'll, we've got red in the foreground, so I can stroke that selection. And we'll make it five pixels. That should be good. And, and I'm going to put it on just the inside of this um, the selection. So I say OK. And now I can drop that selection. And now I have a guide, so I know exactly what, what's square here. Um, and I'm going to now go back to this my jumped layer here, and I'm going to select right right above this kind of little circular, you know, branch of something. <laughs> All those kind of interesting little inventions here from Mid Journey. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna select just from there up okay and I'm in this layer and now I'm gonna do a free transform so I can just do command and control T to get that and I'm gonna bring this down oh, again I have to remember to hold down the shift key to just bring that down like that all right so far so good so the idea here is that you know what I'm dealing with now is is uh, now it's a square image, but I I kind of feel like I'm I'm I'd like to get more of this scarf-like thing into the image. So I'm going to go back to my uh, my original image here, the background image, and I'm going to just lasso. this red scarf thing. Now, if the, the, the lasso now has a feather of one pixel. I like to actually visualize the feather, and you can do that using the quick mask command. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the quick mask, and I can see that that one pixel feather is, is, is kind of hard. So let's actually blur this. So that way I can I can look at how blurred the feather is by actually seeing it, right? So let's just do a Gaussian blur here. And yeah, well, 94 is probably too much. Maybe I'll, I'll zoom into this area just to kind of get a feel for how soft that is. And uh, yeah, something like that. I think it's going to blend in and you won't even be able to tell. Okay, so now we're going to go exit the uh, quick mask function. And I'm going to jump this into a new layer. So Command or Control J. I now have 
that part and a new layer just sort of ghosted in there. I'm going to bring that up above my square layer, right? So this, this layer is the layer that I already squeezed down all this smoke and all that stuff. And I want to now transform this scarf. I want to bring it down and skew it and maybe try and get this, this red portion to come down into the image more. Okay, so let's let's do our free transform, Commander Control T. And um, I want to let's let's if I if I hold down control or um, command control, I can get um, options here. So I'm going to skew this first. I want to skew it over like that. Uh, I'm going to do free transform and pull this down. Maybe rotate it a little bit. Maybe distort this. So again, kind of right click or control click to get um, distort. And I, I kind of want to make this thing kind of fit into this, into this frame a lot more. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get this piece this piece down into this image and I'm, I'm having a lot of tr luck here at the moment. Let's let's see what else I can do. Um, let me go back to my go back to my bottom layer here. Maybe I'll just grab this this one piece here. We'll do our uh, visualize again, and I can just run that same filter because it's set up the right way. Okay. Jump that up. Bring that above everything. And now, now I've got this, this piece here that I can, I can resize this. Let me bring this image in there. I can resize this, uh, just kind of get it to extend into the image here. Hold down the shift key and I'm going to stretch this in. Maybe rotate it a little bit. I'm starting to get the idea that it's not always that easy to make things happen exactly the way you want them to happen. Um, and, and I'm trying to remember how I did this before, which is always another issue. At any rate, uh, I can get in here and we'll move this down into this image a bit more. Maybe I'll, I'll rotate it a bit more. And again, I want to bring that in so I can see uh, where it, it plays against, against the, uh, the other images here. All right, let's just say that's close enough for the purposes of our demonstration here. Uh, I'm not going to turn off my, well, no, I'll leave that on because now I'm going to crop. I want to crop this whole thing into a square. So we'll use, uh, I'll use the, the marquee tool and we'll do the same thing. I'll just hold down the shift key to get that perfect, um, that perfect square. I can now throw that that guide away, and uh, we'll just crop. All right. Anyway, you should get the feel for the idea here that it, you you always have to do something to kind of fine tune and and push this image into the proper shape. Let's go back. Well, that's it for now. 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative explorations. Uh, it's often the case that uh, we don't get exactly what we want on the first try with uh, Midjourney or any of these AI image generating platforms. You can roll and roll and roll until you're blue in the face and still not get something that you like. So it's Photoshop skills will come in very handy. So don't forget, you can always use Photoshop to enhance an AI image. Why, why throw up your hands and say it's done? Um, so anyway, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.